All right, everyone, welcome to History for the Ages. I hope you're enjoying all the different lectures I have on my channel here. Um, so there's a new movie coming out, Oppenheimer, and a lot of people heard the name, heard the Manhattan Project, of course. Um, at the time I'm recording this, I haven't seen the movie yet, just the trailer, and I thought, you know, for people who might want to go watch the movie or just want to learn a little bit about it, I'll make a kind of short video. I always like, you know, making videos about historical movies. I actually have a couple videos up already. I'll leave the link in the description of some of my favorite history-based movies. Um, obviously, I don't know how accurate this is and how good of a movie it is till after I see it, uh, but the trailer looked pretty interesting. So what is that Manhattan Project? What does Roland Oppenheimer have? That's basically the two things I want to cover here. So the Manhattan Project was an incredibly top secret event. And, you know, one of the things I tell my students, it was so secret that Truman, who was the vice president of the United States, didn't know about the Manhattan Project. Ironically, you know, Stalin actually had spies in the Manhattan Project and he knew about it, I think, even before Truman. Um, and so the way it all started is there were many scientists from Europe, people who were trying to kind of leaving um, Europe as they saw the Nazi threat rising, and they were very worried that the Nazis would develop this nuclear bomb first. And so many prominent scientists, including Albert Einstein, used their influence to basically go to FDR. Einstein had a conversation with FDR and explained to him the significance of this weapon. And FDR heard and he agreed. And this began kind of the first research of the atomic bomb uh, starting in 1940. So that's kind of where it really began. The Manhattan Project officially began around 1942. Um, people say, why is it called the Manhattan Project? Because they know the tests were in New Mexico, specifically in Los Alamos. And the reason is initially it was established by a man named Colonel James Marshall. Um, and he worked in a big high rise floor in, in Broadway in Manhattan. So that's why it's called the Manhattan Project. That's where kind of the initial, a lot of the initial research was done. Uh, but even though we think of all the tests and everything done in Los Alamos, and it was done in part, Manhattan Project was in more than one location. So that's essentially how it begins. It begins with the real concern that the Nazis were going to get something of this devastation first, a significant weapon of that devastation first. Um, and so they start the project. Now, in terms of Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer is an interesting figure. He was actually the son of a German immigrant. And one of the things that will eventually happen, he will become the director of the Los Alamos Laboratory in 1943. And he gets kind of the nickname of the father of the atomic bomb because of how much he really played in developing the actual bomb. Um, the first bomb, people think Hiroshima and so forth, that's of course going to be used during the war, but there was something called the Trinity Test, and that was the first nuclear we weapon test ever tested in a place in New Mexico. And, you know, one of the things that we see with Oppenheimer and many of the other people who are involved in the atomic bomb is how many of them kind of realized how devastating it was. I think one quote he was used is, now I become the death, the destroyer of the world, an old uh, quote that um, he got from another source, you know, showing what this atomic bomb means. And even after the war, when people saw what the Hiroshima bomb was like, many of these scientists said, whoa, 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 you know, maybe don't do more of these. And, you know, I'll get into this issue in a second of its use in, the, in World War II. Um, so what ends up happening is, you know, the, 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 the bomb goes, we use it during the war. Uh, it is what does end the war in the Pacific, specifically Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I kind of get into a discussion of was it justified? How justified was it to end the war in my World War II video? So I don't want to spend a lot of time on it here. Now, in terms of Oppenheimer, um, you know, afterwards, he kind of runs into a problem because remember I said he was the son of a German immigrant. And one of the things that he was kind of associated with was some um, communist groups. And after the war, we have, of course, the Red Scare and this idea that communist spies are everywhere. Um, and he was accused of supporting communism, something that actually wasn't true, right? Uh, he wasn't, you know, he was more, he never really kind of joined any communist parties or anything like that. Uh, but because of the fact that he was kind of connected with some communists and supporting some communist ideas uh, when he was younger, people were concerned about that and it led to him being stripped of his security clearance. Um, Eventually, that was all overthrown, but it wasn't until 2022 till he was fully cleared of it. 
Uh, so it's kind of an interesting story in terms of his role and what happened to him and how he's kind of mistreated after the war. I'm assuming the movie's going to kind of capture a lot of that as well. Uh, so anyways, that's just a little bit of background on Oppenheimer and Manhattan Project. You know, hopefully you found that as a little good background if you go and watch the movie. Um, and I have some other, again, great suggestions for movies that I enjoy watching that are history related. I'll put those in the descriptions. Uh, and feel free to share this with everybody. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thank you.